we come to a place like this to get some physical seclusion. We're cut off from our usual connections with other people, have some time to be by ourselves. But the problem is when we're by ourselves, we find that we're not alone. We're lacking what's called mental seclusion. Because as the Buddha said, wherever you go, you've got your cravings as your companions talking to you, saying to like this, you don't like that, get this, don't get that. We tend to go along with them. So they're not just our companions, they become our masters and we're their slaves. That's where the real slavery and the lack of freedom lies. So that's where we want to focus our minds. First, just learning how to separate ourselves from these things, to see that we're not the same thing as they are, because that's how they're able to worm their way into our into our behavior, as we think, oh, this is my defilement, this is what I think, I agree with this. So you've got to step back, at least enough to say, do I really agree with these things? Because there's, there's a lot of chatter that goes on in the mind. Why do you have to identify with everything there is? It's when you take it on and say, yep, this is what I believe, that's when it suddenly becomes your karma. So you don't have to take it on. Just think of it as the noise in the background, like the noise of the hummingbirds. If you pay attention to it, it can disturb you, but if you don't pay any attention to it, it's just there in the background and it becomes part of nature. And it's the same with a lot of the voices in your mind that are telling you to do this and do that. If you see that they're telling you to do the wrong things, you don't have to listen to them, you don't have to identify them, you don't have to think that that's what you really think. It's kind of just kind of there. It's the result of past karma and some decisions you made in the past keep reverberating through the mind. Some habits you picked up. But you don't have to continue with them if you don't want to. That's the important teaching. That's where the real freedom lies, is we have this choice right here, right now, to say either yes or no to these things, to go along with them or to step back. Sometimes when you step back, they're still there, but that doesn't matter, as long as you're not under their influence. You're relatively safe. So as you stay with the breath, remind yourself, you've got a really good place to stay right here. Just stay with the sensation of the breathing as well, the chatter that goes on in the mind. Okay, think of it like the chatter of the, the crows, the chatter of the hummingbirds. You don't have to get involved. You don't have to figure out which hummingbird was the right one to chase the other hummingbird away, or which crow should get which piece of bread. Let them sort that th out for themselves. But your duty is to stay right here and have a sense of, develop a s greater sense of independence so that you're not a slave to these things all the time. That's when the mind can be free. It can be free anywhere. 